beaches are structured by a combination of the waves and the sediment that's available uh, for the beach. So waves redistribute sediment along a shoreline to produce beaches and the dynamics of their interaction with the seafloor near the shoreline and coming up onto the shoreline shapes the, uh, the sediment transport of beaches um, themselves. So waves move in the ocean and when they start interacting with the sediment surface there's a lot of friction and that friction is what causes the waves to break. Um, the friction is slowing down the water flow speed at the bottom of the wave but the top of the wave keeps moving quickly and it overtops uh, the bottom of the wave and that's, that's how you get the turbulence. So one of the things that, that surfers know very well is that the topography offshore of a beach strongly influences the behavior of, of how and when those waves break. So the, when the waves break, there's a, there's a lot of turbulence. And so this, is, this zone in here is uh, one where there's often erosion. And there's a lot of force of the wave and the water flow um, moving on shore. So a lot of the sediment that gets eroded during the breaker gets washed up the shoreline. Um, and the, the wave as it comes up is called um, is the, the swash from the break. So the, the uh, swash zone gets sediment transported onto it when the waves come up and then the sediment um, gets uh, eroded back or transported back offshore as those waves are treated. The details of how much erosion and onshore transport you have versus offshore transport uh, determines whether the beach is growing through time, it's, a, it's stable through time, or it's eroding away. And so that, that process of the waves breaking creates layers of sand on the beach that are about parallel to the topography of the beach. So as the size of the waves change through time, as the tides go up and down and storms come and go, you end, beaches end up changing their shape. But in general, the swash zone has uh, approximately parallel layers. They uh, dip towards the ocean. As the waves change, it erodes the beaches, deposits on them, but this is the, these parallel uh, layers the dip towards the ocean are really common for beaches. And a lot of times, because the wave size varies, the grain size varies a lot. It's often, there are often specific layers that are well sorted, but between layers it can be different. So for example, if you have very high waves, you might end up with a granule beach Whereas in a, at a time during low waves, you might end up depositing uh, much finer grained, maybe uh, fine sand uh, layers. Now, there are times when you have particu particularly large waves associated with storms and tides, and they create, uh, they build up a berm. So the berm, is usually created at the maximum height that the swash zone um, comes up. So this is the max, approximately the max uh, swash 
reaches this area. So, so if you have a big wave that comes all the way up here, it's likely to transport a lot of sand and then it will stop right here at this berm. And so you, the layers can extend all the way up into this area, but only when you have the very strong waves. Occasionally, the waves will actually top over the berm and you can accumulate sediment on the back side here as well. So the, the waves will be carrying sediment and they can erode as they start coming over the crest, the water speed will uh, increase again and they can transport sediment into the uh, back berm area. And so while most of the beach deposits are in layers that are dipping towards the ocean, there is this transition um, to a back berm deposit. And if the beach migrates away, uh, it will leave this topographic high uh, that is eventually called a beach ridge. So over time, you have this deposition on, on shore, uh, but there's also some of this eroded sediment ends up going offshore. And once it goes offshore, the energy, the, the flow speeds are much lower and it becomes more and more difficult for that sand to get transported back onshore. Occasionally with large storm waves, some of it might be. But on average, if you don't, if there's not a process that keeps supplying sand to the beaches, they will erode away because there's the sink of sand offshore where the flow speeds are very low. Uh, most areas with beaches, the sand comes from rivers flowing in to the coast, and then that sand is transported um, via longshore drift uh, away from the river uh, mouths. And so it can be in one direction on the shoreline or it can be both. But the beaches are intrinsically an environment that uh, only holds sand temporarily. So when humans do things like build dams that reduce the flow of sand into shorelines, it's, we're cutting off the supply of sand to maintain healthy beaches. And without, them being, without beaches having replenishment of sand, whether it's natural or from humans, um, they are not um, stable. They will erode through time with the transport of that sand into an offshore environment. Thanks for watching.